This week on Supercars Talk, the first of the Bathurst wildcards has been announced and Gen 3 testing has been put back again. The big news this week is that Pascal Wehrlein has taken out race two of the Formula E season. <laughs> ah, I nearly said that with a straight face. Um, no, um, first wildcard announced for the year. Um, I'm putting this down as the biggest news this week. Uh, there is another big story coming up, but um, yeah, uh, Craig Lowndes, no surprises, will be partaking in a super cheap auto wildcard. Um, at the moment, just announced to Bathurst, but I'd, I'd hazard a guess that this is going to involve at least Sandown as well. And I have heard murmurings uh, that the, it might, might just involve a, uh, a couple of solo appearances, possibly for the co-driver of that car, Zane Goddard. Um, so Zane is a little bit experienced. He did the Superlight program uh, in 2020 with uh, Matt Stone Racing there, where he shared that car with Jake Kostecki. They got half the rounds each. Um, then he had a full-time year with Matt Stone Racing in 21, had to sit out 22, um, whatever, it didn't work out there. Um, and then he went and did the uh, Bathurst with James Courtney. Didn't cover himself in glory at Bathurst, uh, a lap one mistake. Um, a lot of people's, you know, head on a stake. We should, uh, Feather and tar him or whatever and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah, but um, not a real surprising choice, I suppose, from Triple Eight for that one. They haven't obviously got the juniors involved this year that they had last year. They had a lot more option there with the Super 2 guys fighting it out. Um, but yeah, not... not a massive surprise he has got you know that one and a half years of main game experience did do a few years of super two before that um does come with a budget uh whether that plays into triple eight's uh, decisions or not um he he does have a budget there so that wouldn't have hurt um and when you look around uh who else is available you know he's he's a quick young kid um let's not let one mistake define a career there um the the other thing I suppose from this announcement is that it looks like Jamie will be taking over the lead role in that uh, car 88 uh, Bathurst just a little bit tongue in cheek there after what happened in qualifying last year um, yeah so uh, Triple Eight have got their their full uh, lineup with Wildcard announced um, before I don't think there's a couple of teams like we can assume Timmy Blanchard is going to be uh, teaming up with Todd Hazelwood there um, yeah, I don't think any other teams have, uh, you know, an announced like fully what their lineups will actually uh, be. And there's a couple of driver contracts that kind of carry over. Dale Woods carries over. Uh, Zach Best has a deal there with Tickford. But uh, yeah, the Triple Eight lineup fully locked away there for the endurance races uh, before most teams have even announced a co driver or even then what lineup uh, they'll be in. So uh, yeah, tri Triple Eight definitely ahead of the curve there. Now on to the Gen 3 testing. Uh, yeah, okay. So I'm filming this on the weekend, but uh, they were, but the Queensland teams were actually supposed to be out for their shakedown yesterday, which was Monday, uh, and the Victorian teams out tomorrow, which is Wednesday uh, for their shakedowns. Triple Eight and DJR, the homologation teams, have both said they will not be doing the shakedown on Monday um, at the time of filming. Uh, that is in the future, so it's coming out in the past, though. Anyway, the, the magic of film. Um, yeah, so they're not going to be shaking down this week. Uh, if anyone does shake down this week, it's looking like it may be the Blanchards on Wednesday. <sighs> My guess on that one, though, is that they will postpone and do it with some of the other teams. Um, you go go with some other Victorian teams when everybody's ready. Yeah, so it's a little bit disappointing. I'd prefer to see them get it right. Uh, a little bit late in the day, calling, you know, these things, but these things do happen. Uh, 
everyone calling doom and gloom of the you know the whole suit this is ridiculous and all that kind of stuff uh i do recall that there was some teams still bolting together car or the future cars uh in the garages at the the single pre-season test that they had um at sydney motorsport park uh back when car of the future kicked off and i do recall even one team was still bolting together a car at uh, in Adelaide um, on the, the Thursday or whatever it was, getting ready for practice on the Friday. So it's it's not like race. I mean, it, there's a lot of these fans who probably haven't been around for um, a, a long time. Um, I remember like when the VT was introduced, HRT and Perkins were the only ones running them for quite a while um, while everyone else kind of, you know, got up to speed. When the V8 category kicked off in 93, there was... A handful of guys raced the cars at the end of 92. Um, HRT and Seaton had a car ready. Uh, Brock had a car ready as well. And then at the, the start of the 93 season, there was probably... 10, 12 cars actually racing in the category. Um, and a lot of those were like VN Commodores that were converted to VPs as well. The, this is a major undertaking. So um, it's nothing new for these. I mean, look at the Formula 1 teams. Um, they, they wouldn't have their cars bolted together for this year yet either. So uh, let's let's not get too carried away with, you know, this being a disaster that the cars aren't actually ready to run. Um, one good thing that I suppose has come out of this is that the the shakedown rules normally you can only do 60 kilometers on a shakedown apparently they have um basically taken that away so the shakedowns will be you can run all day it's a shakedown day not um just just a shakedown run uh so that means i think all the teams get a shakedown um they get a test day and then there was the all-in test day which there hasn't been any clarity on that yet whether there will actually be that um everybody goes to the test day because i think that was down for when everyone is now talking about going and really doing their shakedowns and test days I'd imagine there'd be quite a few teams as well um, I, I don't know on the bookings on the circuits but uh, I think quite a few dates have been booked out uh, <laughs> just in anticipation and I'd say you'd probably get you know like teams going up to Winton on you know in two weeks time or whatever going up on the Wednesday doing a shakedown day and then doing their test day on the Thursday uh, just to get everything in because the, the time is really ticking before um, Newcastle as I said it's it's not at danger stations really yet um, I'm fairly confident that everyone will be in Newcastle ready to rock and roll uh, and it'll all look fine on the outside you know for the casual fan who just will tune in at Newcastle though oh all the new cars are there no problem um, but yeah it's you, you're probably uh, doing a bit of a doggy paddle at the moment where everything looks like it's okay uh, but it's everything's a bit frantic under the water at the moment. Um, but yeah, I, I'm still confident, and I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very happy with Gen Three happening because the racing should be better. Um, yeah. Give, give it a few rounds in, I might reserve my judgment on that. But at, at the moment, um, I, th I think the category is heading in the right way and I'd prefer it to be, you know, the, the cars being finished just in time for the first round rather than it being wrong. The other little bit of news uh, this week that uh, really caught my eye uh, came out via um, an Erebus uh, post. Uh, Tom Moore, the Will Brown's engineer, I think, I'm pretty sure he's Will Brown's engineer. Anyway, he was uh, talking about the weight of the cars and... Um, this I'm, I'm not sure why this is only just kind of coming out now but they're looking at a 1250 kilo uh, minimum weight for the cars that's down from it was a that's 1250 with the driver included um that's down from it was i think it was 1410 kilos uh in the last few years so that's a, a massive chunk of weight which they've got a lot of that from um go to composites for a lot of things rather than steel um and also a, a genuinely smaller car like with a lower roof line and things like that um but that's uh that's nearly as light as a formula one car now because as you know formula one cars are up to about you know 1.1 1 .1, uh ton now because uh yeah they just seem to be getting fatter and fatter every year um the driver weight also uh so what happens the drivers get ballasted up so essentially everyone's the same weight to make it more fair um or else everyone would be trying to be on you know massive diets and getting down to 50 kilos and things like that 
which isn't so healthy. Uh, previously, we had the uh, the Stephen Johnson rule where it was 105 kilos. Uh, now it's uh, dropped down to 90 kilos, which is um, that really kind of buggers up, you know, my career of uh, driving a supercar or racing a supercar competitively. Let's not get into the fact that you, you know. Um, I'm just not as good as these guys. Uh, yeah, even in my, uh, you know, my rental hire um, go-karting days. Uh, yeah, just... It nowhere on that but I'm gonna say yeah it's just um it, it's because I'm too heavy you know um I'm, <laughs> I'm not fat I'm big boned <laughs> yeah so, um I just I just thought that was a little interesting tidbit in there um that maybe you know should should have been a bigger news story uh because that's it's quite good when you're seeing all these categories and it's like especially Formula 1 the cars are just getting fatter and fatter each year and it's looking more and more ridiculous uh that is definitely uh, something to get excited about that the cars are a bit lighter should make them a little bit more nimbler um, and a bit more easy to you know move around on track so another thing that hopefully will make the racing better so that's it for this week uh let's not have too many comments about testing not happening and us being disappointed about that um let me know what you think about zane goddard's signing uh in that wild card with craig lowndes would you have picked someone different and why would it have been fabian coulthard uh, <laughs> Not saying he hasn't got a job with Walking Shores, but has he this year? Um, yeah, well, who would you have picked for that seat? Um, I think Zane's actually, you know, it'll be an inspired choice at the end of the year because he'll get in really good Triple Eight equipment and do a really good job, and everyone will, you know, all of a sudden put him back on the top of the shopping list for um, a 2024 main game drive. Uh, but he will have to fight it out with Richie Stanaway as well, which will, will definitely be a tough one. So anyway, uh, yeah, down in the comments, leave me your thoughts. Until next time, I'm still Dave and I'll catch you later.